kids right here what they would take with themselves. My stuffed animals. Yes. <laughs> my books. You're, you're packing your life in that suitcase. Yeah. This one yeah. would bring my family and pets. Yeah. Family and pets, uh, yeah. Which I guess for a kid makes it sort of like not leaving. Francisco, you wrote um, Decade of Betrayal about the repatriation of Mexicans in the 1930s. Well, Julian, uh, the population that came to the United States from Mexico beginning in the 1890s, many of them living here 20, 30 years, contributing to the prosperity of the nation. And building their own businesses. And building their own businesses, becoming responsible individuals in this society. And find themselves, during the economic crisis of the Great Depression, being forced to go to Mexico. And their children, who were largely American citizens born here, being forced as well to be expelled. So that expulsion is actually unconstitutional deportation. We're right here at the L.A. Plaza Museum in Los Angeles. This is one of the places where the entire American population can understand that history of immigration, that history of expulsion, and, and be prepared to deal with the reality of today. But it also, it takes it a step further. It, it brushes aside the careless labeling of people like Donald Trump because you can't help but see, oh yes, that is a person, that is another person, that is another person. You can't say that the kid in that photograph is a rapist or a murderer or a drug smuggler. Right. He's a kid. Right, he's a kid. He deserves to be treated properly, like a human being. Like a human being. Mm. That's what we have to do. Mm. And museums like this do a great job yes. in presenting exactly that, especially when it's focusing on a group that is presently being tagged very carelessly by your president as criminals. I mean, how does any leader in any country get away with damning a whole group because of their ethnic background? I think it's linked to the news cycle and just buzz headlines here and there. I think it's also maybe due to the difficult task of a democracy, of not only being informed, but trying to inform other people. Mm. And I think it's also linked to uh, the profound changes that are occurring in American society and globally. Um, I think the loss of jobs in the auto industry, in the steel industry, the mining industry has really been, you know, very, very paramount for at least 30 years in w what has happened to the men, women, and children hmm. uh, in, in that population hasn't been dealt effectively. So we have people that at the, not only at the bottom of the social economic ladder, but uh, they don't even feel that they're part of the ladder anymore. And they're, and they're voting in that manner. Hmm. And I don't think many of them have had direct contact with what they might see as the other. And, and, and not having that, not knowing uh, that population as ordinary people, hmm. I think or as, as people, as, as pe people. As people. That's the interesting yes, thing. Yes, right. You've got people who don't even think they're part of the ladder willing to see other people not as human at all. And, and what do you think about the idea of spending, what, a hundred plus billion dollars on building a wall along part of the border between Mexico and uh, California? Totally stupid. <laughs> totally stupid and a, a terrible statement of this government and American society to make to the world, building a, ro a wall. Mm. Um, and rather, we should be building bridges, obviously, mm. between Mexico, which is our leading trade partner, and Latin America, which, is, which we share huge links with economically, culturally, in, in so, many, so many different ways. So it's ludicrous to be building a wall. There's already a wall there. So places where you have a large population, there's already a wall. And if it isn't physically there, there's an electronic wall that's there. 
So what we need to do is to, uh, you know, demythologize uh, Trump, his arguments, not his arguments, but his his tweets and his loud talk, and and really get beyond that, and in the sense of why is he talking walls and and et cetera like that, and really kind of move beyond that and deal with the reality of the situation, men, women, and children. The interesting thing about the wall is it does make it much more difficult and dangerous for people who are desperate enough to get across the border so that you're getting hundreds of people dying every year in their desperate attempt to reach a place that's safe. Well, we, we already have a wall. It's, it's, always, it's already nature's wall mm. because we have the Sonora Chihuahua Desert. And that desert, for many months of the year, it's, it's very, very difficult to cross. Mm. And so we have people that are forced to, to make that uh, trip uh, for themselves and for their families to make that trip. And, and that, that is already a wall. Mm. The idea of building a wall seems a very long way removed from the um, uh, plea on the Statue of Liberty to bring me your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. <laughs> well, th that's a very important uh, observation, and I think it really speaks to the history of this country. We are a country of immigrants. We were created through immigration, people coming here. My problem or dilemma is that uh, in American society, when people start labeling groups and dealing with them in this way and that way, they forget that history. Mm. And they forget their own family's history mm. and how they got here. And, I'm, and I think it's pretty callous for people all of a sudden to say, okay, we're going to shut the door. I got in, shut that damn door. I mean, I, I don't know about our right to be able to shut that door, and our reasons to shut that door. Coming here as an immigrant, becoming a part of the society, is becoming American. And the children being born here, particularly second generation, that is becoming American. And so are we going to lose that? Are we going to lose the ambition, the power, the courage that we have from immigrants and their children? <laughs>